Who cares? Nobody cares. You look so awkward. Why am I the fucking worst? <laughs> Well, hello! Welcome back to my channel, Jashana here, to talk about many friggin' books that I bought recently. These were, at one point, I think, in order of, like, when I got them, but they are not now. Who cares? Nobody cares. So, I'm just gonna- oh god, there's so many. I don't think I have any more. I do have one coming, but I don't know when I'll get it. At any rate, whatever. Let's just- let's just get into it. First one, I actually um, read this now already since receiving it and uh, tabbed it up and everything, but that is the regular hardcover copy of Nolan by Michael J. Sullivan. I've had this one since last year, the limited edition, special edition, whatever, because uh, I always back the Kickstarters for these, but I hadn't gotten this one yet, and I got it, and then I read it, loved it. Spoiler alert, if my recent wrap-up didn't already go up about this, but yeah, really loved it. And I love this cover. Mark Simonetti does the artwork. So yay, got this, read it, loved it. And then I finally got paperback of Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I have the special edition hardcovers, the, what were they? Were they a Lumicrate? But whatever, I hadn't gotten this, so I have it now. It's so chunky my god but yeah for any rereads because i read this uh on ebook initially so yeah now for any future rereads i have a readable paperback because i ain't reading the special edition one and then i got this sent to me very very kindly by the author uh antoine bondelet sent me a hardcover of tj young and the orishas 2 the wind weaver storm which i read recently and really liked, got it personalized. Very, very nice. I took the dust jacket off because I just love that these are naked hardcovers with the cover like right on it, love it. And he also sent me some fun stickers. They're so fun, love them. Artwork from, the, from that. And then also a comic of The Man With No Name, a one shot little uh, issue. Yeah, very excited to have this too. Love it. So yay, thanks again. And yeah, once again, and one that I've already read. <laughs> All of these I've already read. Getting into stuff that I haven't read, I got volume seven of Monstrous. This one is Devourer, love this cover. Cannot wait to do this. I think I actually though might reread all of the first ones, the first six. I don't know, we'll see. Just because this world is so, it's intense. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. This was a completely random impulse purchase. Someone posted a poem from this poetry collection uh, this, by this poet, by this author. And I just really liked it. And so I went and bought this book. I Lost Summer Somewhere, poems by Sarah Russell. And let me see if I can find the one. Ah, if I had three lives, okay. Yeah, this is the one I saw. If I had three lives, I'd marry you in two. The other, perhaps that life over there at Starbucks, sitting alone, writing. A memoir, maybe a novel or this poem. No kids, probably. A small apartment with a view of the river. And books, lots of books. And time to read. Friends to laugh with. And a man sometimes, for a weekend, to remember what skin feels like when it's alive. I'd be thinner in that life vegan, practice yoga. I'd go to art films, farmer's markets, drink martinis in swingy skirts and big jewelry. I'd vacation on the main coast and wear a flannel shirt. Weekend guy left behind, loving the sm smell of sweat and aftershave more than I did him. I'd walk the beach at sunrise, find perfect shell spirals and study pockmarks, water makes in sand. And I'd wonder sometimes if I'd ever find you. And I just thought that was so, so sweet and touching and like good. I liked it. So I bought the poetry book. I never ever, I hardly ever read poetry. When I was younger, I read a lot of poetry. I have from like my childhood books, I have several, I mean, I have Maya Angelou's com complete collected poems that I read over and over as a kid. I've got Ain't I a Woman, a collection of poetry. 
about being a woman. I mean, Shel Silverstein, <laughs> kid stuff, but uh, like so many, <laughs> there's another one there, love poems, Robert Frost collection of poetry, uh, Emily Dickinson collected, po like I read a lot of poetry as a kid and wrote a lot of it that was so <laughs> angsty and terrible um but i did actually in college also have a poem that i wrote nominated by my professor for an award and i was like runner up or something like that i didn't like win but so like i i've liked poetry in the past i've written poetry but i don't know just in the last freaking since college really i just haven't read poetry much at all uh, but I really liked that one that I read, so we'll see. Oh, I lied, there is one more that I purchased a copy of that I've already read, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I got the hardcover um, reprint by Red Hook um, publisher. I don't love this cover, I just think it's kinda eh. I just wish they would've taken the original and just like jazzed it up a little bit, put some maybe color in it, foil, but I really like the design of the other one. Uh, also, uh, Elle told me, because she read it from this copy that she was sent by the publisher, and there's like an ending thing that they added that I don't think I like. It was this, like, where does it start? Yeah, an encore of roses. This whole, there's like this whole part at the end that's like, how many pages is it? Like 30 pages or something? that she was like, it's kind of weird, and she told me about it, I haven't read it myself yet, but from what she told me about it, I also am like, I find that that's an odd choice that they added that, and I don't think it was needed from what it sounds like. But at any rate, I have this now, just because I loved the book so much and I wanted the hardcover, and I wanted to support. I really like the, it has like a quote from it right here on the cover, I think that's really cool. And then, this is one that I have not read yet, but I did start the ebook, um, and I did order already my regular hardcover copy. I just don't have it yet. That is the one that it's on its way, but I probably won't have it until later this week. But I got my special limited edition of Fairlane by Michael J. Sullivan, book two in the Rise and the Fall series. Goes with that one. And I just cannot. This one feels different than that one too. It feels like more plush, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. It feels like it's softer, but it's like very clearly a hardcover. I don't know. I don't know if it's different like faux leather. It's faux leather, but I don't know if it's like different, but it, it feels, that one feels good too, but like this one just feels so like amazing. And I just love this design, the cover, like the art is so cool little foiling yeah I love this and the the actual cover is this for this one and yeah I started it I'm enjoying it so far I'm not very far into it though mine is copy 732 out of 2000 and another uh, beautiful one I got and this one completely on a whim because I I mean obviously I don't know if I'm gonna like the book or not but I saw this cover and I I was like, I gotta buy that. I This is one where I'm like, I, I would have to hate this book for me to want to get rid of this. Even if I read it and I'm kind of like, eh, about it, I just want to keep this for the cover. A Taste of Gold and Iron by Alexandra Rowland. Just what the, what the hell? And like, there's the colorful like stuff here that also is like shiny, I don't know how well you can see it. It's just, oh my God, I love it. I love it so much. I don't know if it's like being blurry or not, but I just think this is, and there, it's hot pink on the inside. Love that. It's just kind of a regular naked cover, which is fine, I guess. But yeah, I just was like, this is so stupid gorgeous. I can't even deal with it. This one is um, male, male, queer, fantasy, romance. I haven't been saying what any of these books are about. Why am I the fucking worst? <laughs> so yeah, hopefully I like it, but like I said, I would have to straight up hate this on like House of Sky and Breath levels for me to want to get rid of this because it's just so pretty. Got a little kitty cat coming to visit me. Hi, what are you doing? 
Don't rub on the tripod, though. You can come up here. Come on. Come say hi. I don't know how well you can see him. Kushma. Hi, buddy. You just didn't go here. You look so uncomfortable. He doesn't love being held. He loves being pet, and he's very affectionate. But he doesn't... I don't think he was held as a baby. <laughs> he looks so awkward. <laughs> Why are you just staring like that, baby? Why are you just staring like that? Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can get down. Here, here, here. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm covered in hair. Uh, okay. Uh, this is also a random one. Someone recommended this to me. One of you. Of course, I cannot remember who. Uh, but when I was asking about some, like, Central American, South American inspired fantasy books, like, not magical realism, but just, like, fantasy, uh, someone suggested this series. I think only this first book is translated into English, though, so I'm like, I need to step up my Spanish game. <laughs> uh, but the first book is The Days of the Deer by Liliana Bodak. And there's a thing on the front that says, from Ursula K. Le Guin, when asked who I admire within my genre, I can only think of one name, Liliana Bodak. I'm like, dang, all right. It is known that the strangers will sail from some part of the ancient lands and will cross the Yentru Sea. The rest is all shadows, shadows that prevent us from seeing the faces of those who are coming. In the house of stars, the astronomers of the open air read contradictory omens. A fleet is coming to the shores of the remote realm, but are these the long-awaited Northmen returned triumphant from war? Or the emissaries of the Son of Death come to wage a last battle against life itself? From every village of the seven tribes, a representative is called to a great council. Some will be willing to sacrifice their lives, others their people, but one thing is certain, the era of light is at an end. I mean, all right. So, yeah. Again, though, I think only this first book is, uh... <laughs> translated so and the translation is done by nick kaistor with lucia kaistor arendar 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 there we have that thank you to whoever recommended this sorry i cannot remember and then two books that i just got um yesterday no saturday yeah today's monday i went to the local used bookstore one of them here in phoenix um over on my side of town, Elle and Sean came over this way and we met up there and I got these two books. This first one is book two of a series where I have book one, but have I read it? Nope. And I also have heard that I actually shouldn't start with this series. This is just one of the series in this world and there's a different series I should read first that has so many books. So why I got this? Who knows? But I got Sword and Shadow by Michelle Sagara, The Wolves of Elantra, book two. So if you've read Michelle Sagara, where should I start? What's the series I should start with? I cannot remember. Someone told me before. Yeah, Chronicles of Elantra. Is that the one? Do I have to read all of those? There's like a bunch, I feel like. I don't know. At any rate, that this is that. And then I got another Ursula K. Le Guin that I want to read, The Beginning Place. Apparently this is... Time says it's a, an uncommonly graceful fantasy romance. Fleeing from the monotony of his life, Hugh Rogers finds his way to the beginning place, a gateway to Tembria Brezi, an idyllic, unchanging world of eternal twilight. Irene Panis was 13 when she first found the beginning place. Now, seven years later, she has grown to know and love the gentle inhabitants of Tembria Brezi, or Mountain Town, and she sees Hugh as a trespasser. But then a monstrous shadow threatens to destroy Mountain Town, and Hugh and Irene join forces to seek it out. Along the way, they begin to fall in love. Are they on their way to a new beginning or a fateful end? And the final one I have today is one that I've been avoiding a bit, um, just because of the content of it. Um, but I recently saw Ashley at Bookish Realm talking about it, and... Um, the way she was talking about it, I just feel like it will be kind of like how Bad Romance by uh, Heather Demetrios was, which that was a young adult fiction. 
Um, but it was about an abusive relationship, largely emotionally abusive, mentally, verbally, uh, but that also did show some physical abuse and sexual abuse. And it was a hard read for me. Um, it, like parts of it were kind of triggering, but like in a cathartic, like I feel seen, someone is explaining how all of that felt for me when I was in that situation. And it's like kind of cathartic to read it and to have that like, to be confronted with like, oh, someone else knows what this fucking feels like and it's being put on the page in a very clear like way uh so i feel like that's what this will be and it's a memoir though in the dream house by carmen maria machado this one is um a sapphic relationship so it is slightly different and i from what i understand that element of the relationship and the abuse um is explored or explained like the differences i guess um of being in a female female relationship with abuse versus like a heterosexual one um so yeah the little blurb carmen maria machado's prismatic revolutionary memoir is an electrifying account of a relationship gone bad and a bold dissection of the mechanisms and cultural representations of psychological abuse each chapter is driven by its own narrative trope, the haunted house, erotica, the buildings Roman, through which Machado holds her story up to the light while also casting a critical eye over legal proceedings, fairy tales, iconic works of film and fiction, and a broad swath of queer history. In the Dream House explodes our ideas about what a memoir can do and be. So yeah, I feel like it's gonna be difficult, <laughs> but Ashley was describing it as someone else who has been in a, a situation like that. That feeling of like, I feel seen, I feel heard, uh, that kind of cathartic release and relief of I don't feel so alone in this or like that nobody understands. So I was like, I, th I, this is my sign. I need to fucking just get a copy of this book and read it sooner rather than later. Um, we will see. We'll report back. And I think that's everything other than, like I said, the Feralane um, regular hardcover I have coming, but uh, that's whatever. I did not buy any ebooks recently. I got some Kindle Unlimited ones that I haven't read, but I didn't purchase any ebooks recently, I don't believe. I did get an audiobook of, um, oh my God, the book I'm fucking reading right now. Serious brain fart at the moment. The Ladies of the Secret Circus by Constance Sayers. Uh, I have the physical copy. Oh no, I took it down because I am partially reading it physically, but um, I did also get the audiobook of that. So that is all. Let me know if you have read any of these, what your thoughts were. Of course, if it's um, one I haven't read, please don't spoil anything for me. <laughs> That'd be great. And you can just leave a little emoji if you want to say hello, but don't have anything else to add. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined and you have not already. As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.